All right, so in this video, we'll talk about how we can use the second derivative to kind of get a better sense of a function's behavior. So let me go to two examples. Um, here, okay. So here we have two separate functions, right? Let's look at one at a time. Here we have e to the one half x. It's a function, it's clearly increasing, right? You can see that as you go from left to right in the x values, the y values are going up, so this function is increasing, right? On the other hand, we have this ln of x plus one function, right, in blue. This function is also increasing, right? You go from left to right, the function values go up, so this function is increasing, right? So we have two increasing functions. Well, we can right away see that they're very different looking, right? This one's kind of curving up and increasing, whereas this one's increasing, but it's kind of curved down, right? So if you think about it, this one's increasing, and then the further to the right you get, the faster it's increasing. Whereas in blue, in my natural log function, you start off increasing really quickly, right? You're shooting up from negative infinity all the way up to zero, and then as you keep increasing, the rate of increase is slowing down, right? It's, it's increasing by less over here than it is on the left, okay? And so the difference between these two functions can be seen in their second derivatives, okay? Let's go to the notes, okay. So second derivative, we say that the second derivative of a function, oops, let me switch over my pen, needs to be on the right monitor, sorry about that. Okay, so a function f of x, right, has derivative f prime, f prime of x, right, and then the derivative of the derivative is what we call the second derivative. And second derivative f double prime of x is sometimes how it's written where f double prime of x is the derivative of the derivative, right? The second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative, right? So sometimes we write this as, you know, d dx of d dx of f of x, right? If I write the first derivative as derivative of f, then now I have these two d dx signs here, and so we also write this as d squared f dx squared. Right. It's kind of a strange notation, but this just means the second derivative in the same way that these two apostrophes make the second derivative. Right. And this form is a little easier when you're taking uh, lots of derivatives. Right. So we don't have to stop at two derivatives. Right. We can take, you know, n derivatives of f. Right. That just means you take the derivative of the derivative of the derivative of the derivative of the derivative. Or you can keep going, right? So f triple prime of x, right? That would be the third derivative of x, right? Or, uh, you know, the nth derivative of x, right? But there's no way to write, or I guess sometimes you can write them like this, n to the fourth, right? So sometimes this one's also written as f of three of x, or this, Number in parentheses indicates the derivative, right? So we can take n derivatives of f to get the nth derivative, okay? But the second derivative is special because it actually tells us about the shape of our function f, okay? So let's switch back and, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so if we switch back, let's look at our first function, right, which is increasing, and we said it looks like it is increasing faster for higher x values. Right? So it looks like the derivative itself is what's increasing. So let's look at this function. Right, So e to the 1 half x is our function in red. Its derivative, recall by the, you know, the chain rule and the exponential function derivative, the derivative of this is just 1 half e to the 1 half x. So the derivative is always positive. Right? In blue, it's always positive, which means that our function in red, our original function, is always increasing. Okay, and then to ask, okay, well, what about the derivative? Well, the derivative is also increasing, right? So if the derivative is increasing, that means our original function will increase faster and faster as we go further to the right. And 
how can we tell that this derivative is increasing? Well, we could take its derivative, right? A derivative, the sine of your derivative tells you whether a function is increasing or decreasing. So the sine of the second derivative will tell us whether the first derivative is increasing or decreasing. So if we look at the second derivative, it's a quarter times e to the one half x. This second derivative is always positive, which means our first derivative is always increasing, which means our function is increasing faster and faster, which means it has this sort of curvature to it where it's concave up, right? It's increasing faster on the right than it is on the left. And that makes kind of like a bowl shaped curve, right? It's pointing upwards, right? So we call that concave up. Curvature is concave up here. And we'll write this stuff down in a second. I'm just kind of showing you before I write it down. Okay. On the other hand, if we look at natural log of x plus one, right? This was the other function that we said was also an increasing function, but it's different, right? It's increasing quickly here. And then the rate of increase seems to slow, right? It kind of slopes off like that. And you can see that this is concave down, right? It's kind of a bowl shape in the other direction. Whereas the e was pointing upwards, this one's pointing downwards. Okay, so if we look at its derivative, right, derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, right, so let's just focus on the right hand side here, let's ignore everything, ignore this part down here, because natural log of x isn't defined over here anyway, so the derivative doesn't make sense over here. But on the right side, right, you can see that the derivative in blue is always positive, right, so that implies that our function in red is always increasing, however you can see that the derivative is bigger on the left and it kind of shrinks down to zero on the right. So the derivative itself is decreasing, right? If you look at its derivative, right? The derivative of our derivative or the second derivative of our original function, that gives us minus one over x squared. And again, ignore the left side again, but in green here, it's always negative, right? Negative one over x squared is always negative, no matter what. So because it's always negative, our first derivative in blue is always decreasing, which means our function in red is concave down, right? The rate of increase, it's an increasing function, but those rates of increase are decreasing, right? Because that first derivative is a decreasing function, okay? So it's kind of piecing together the information from the first derivative and the second derivative into telling us something about the original function, right? So we'll, we'll write this all down in a second. Okay, but this is just an example to show you. So let's go back and we'll write that down. Let me move these functions. We'll practice with this in a second. Okay, so we'd say that when we have a function f, right, and its derivative, right, and its second derivative. Okay, so what do I want to do here? I wanna just make a table of kind of what's, what's going on here. So when the second derivative is negative, right? That implies that the first derivative is decreasing, which implies that our function is concave down, right? When our second derivative is positive, that means our first derivative is increasing which means our original function is concave up, right? And so this down is like that, concave up is like that, okay? And then on top of that, you know, we have the information from our first derivative, right? When this is positive, it implies that our original function is increasing, right? And when this was negative, that implies that our function is decreasing. Okay, and the sign of our second derivative tells us nothing about whether our original derivative, our first derivative, sorry, is positive or negative, right? So we, we ignore the information here when we're making this assessment, right? So first derivative tells you if it's positive or negative, it tells you whether your function is increasing or decreasing. Second derivative, if it's positive or negative, tells you where your derivative is decreasing or increasing, which tells you the concavity or the curvature of your original function, okay? And then places where f prime of x equals zero are critical points, right? We saw this when we talked about the first derivative, right? 
right? So these could be like local minimums, like bottoms of wells or maximums, tops of hills, right? So it'd be like a local max or local min. And we'll get into more of this later too. And where F double prime of X, right? This is another type of special point, uh, but we don't call them critical points. We call them inflection points, right? Because this is where the concavity is going to switch from concave up to concave down. So it's kind of a point of inflection where the curvature is switching. Okay, so let's practice kind of this identification on a, pro on a problem here. So we have in red, we have this function. I believe this is, let me just double check. Okay, x cubed minus nine over two x squared plus six x. So we have x cubed minus nine over two x squared plus six x. This is our function in red. Okay, in blue is its derivative. F prime of x. Right. If we take the derivative of this, we get 3x squared minus 9x plus 6. Right? And then in green, we have its second derivative. The derivative of the derivative, right? So we apply the power rule to the derivative. We get 6x minus 9. All right, so we go from a cubic to a quadratic to a linear function, right? Because every time we take a power, the leading degree drops by one. So we go from a cube to a square to a power of one. Okay. And so let's think about how we can, you know, interpret uh, this function in terms of these derivatives. And what, what do these derivatives tell us about the graph of our function, right? So in red, we have our function, right? And our function is increasing. I'm going to write this in blue, right? It's increasing up to here, right? It's increasing. I'm going to write it like this, right? It's going up, 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 right? It's increasing. I'll write INC for increasing, right? And where it's increasing is the same place as where this derivative is positive, right? So where does this derivative cross the zero? It crosses it at one, right? So this is positive. And then between one and two, it's negative. And then between two and onwards, it's positive again, right? And that corresponds, right? This is the same place. This is one, right? Between one and two, it's negative, right? It's decreasing here. And then from two onwards, it's increasing again. I'm gonna write ink for increasing, right? And that's where the derivative is positive, negative, then positive tells us where it's increasing, decreasing, increasing, right? And so at these little hilltops and the valleys, we have our local mins and our little local maxes, right? So I'll write that on here. Local min. Sorry, this is a local max, right? It's the maximum at the top of the hill there. And this is a local minimum. Okay. So this is all information we've, we've kind of seen before. So now let's talk about the curvature of this function, right? This function is curving downwards on this region here. And then it looks like it's curving upwards on the second half here, right? But it's maybe not so clear where it switches from curving down to curving up. So let's look at the second derivative. Well, the second derivative crosses zero at, if this is one, this is about 1.5, right? So it's negative, And then at x equals 1.5, it becomes positive again. Right, so at x equals 1.5, it's zero. So at x equals 1.5, right, this point here, this is our inflection point, right? Because that's where we're switching from a negative second derivative to a positive second derivative, right? It's passing through zero. So if you look from here to there, right, this inflection point, it's curving downwards, right? The curvature of this thing is down. It looks like kind of a, an upside down U or part of an upside down U, right? So this is concave down up to this point. Maybe I'll write that here. So let's mark this here, right? This is 1.5, right? So up to 1.5, it's concave down, right? Let me just mark these. Okay, so I'm kind of marking the interval here. Uh, let me scroll down a bit. 
And then on the right, it's pointing upwards, right? This bowl, it's almost like a U, and then this, this part would be cut off, right? So that's concave up on the right, right? Because that's where the second derivative is negative to positive, right? And we can play the same game thinking about the derivative and its derivative, right? This derivative is decreasing up until this point here, right? Where it's a little cut off, but, but we know that that's where the minimum is because that's where the second derivative is zero, which is this function's derivative, so that would be where it has a minimum over a maximum, right? So it's decreasing here, right? right? It's decreasing up until x equals 1.5, where it's zero, and then it's increasing again, right? Because that's where it's clearly going up, right? And that's where the second derivative is positive, right? This function's derivative goes from negative to positive, so it goes from uh, decreasing to increasing, right? So, you know, this is kind of all the information that's packed into a function, its first derivative and its second derivative. You can draw, in the next video, we'll go over how to draw a function just from the information about its derivatives alone, okay? And then that'll kind of round out this, this kind of section. All right.